Good morning, <coughs> good morning, everyone. How many of you are guests from outside Israel? Please raise your hands. Welcome to Jerusalem. So exactly three weeks ago, there was a conference right here of the Israeli, the annual conference of the Israeli High Tech Association. This, this is the, where the VCs and many of the startup companies are members. And for that event, the, the marker, one of the leading uh, uh, business journals in Israel, came with a special edition with very big letters saying that the Israeli high-tech locomotive is running out of steam or stamina or whatever how you translate it. So basically what they showed is a quoted study that showed that the, if you look at the sales of the Israeli high-tech sector, it's been uh, flattening for a few years. It's not growing anymore. So, and also some other statistics like this. Uh, the good news is that uh, I think they are using completely the wrong statistics because in the startup business, you are in the business of making startups and monetizing them. And for example, one of the most successful early startups in Israel was a company called ICQ. Uh, one of the leaders in, uh, in messaging, Yossi Pardi was involved in that. This company was sold in 1995 or 6 to AOL for $430 million, which is equivalent today maybe to a billion dollars. And their sales was zero. So a, few, a couple of years later, a company called Chromatis was sold uh, to uh, Lucent, right? To Lucent for a valuation of five billion dollars, and its sales was zero. In other words, all these Chromatis is probably the biggest success stories as far as uh, in terms of valuation of the exit. This doesn't go into the statistics of the study, so. In the business of startup nation, this is not the whole high tech sector, but in the business of start making startups, the inputs are capital and labor, qualified labor, smart people, and the output is startups which you sell or monetize differently by going public, and therefore what you have to measure is value added created by, by those startups, which include profit, labor, and the capital gains. And if you look at that statistics, the situation is much better. But even then, it doesn't tell the whole story because in the high-tech business, the story is always in the future, not the past. And when I see the situation today as compared to 20 years ago when the whole, industry, when the whole startup industry started in Israel, by the way, it was jump-started by a government program called Yuzma, which generated the VC industry in Israel, including Germany, where, Yossi, where Avi was a, a member. It's a very different infrastructure, and I will go quickly over the five main concerns of the industry and what are, why I think these are not really concerns and why I think in the future the situation will be even much better than in the last uh, 20 years. Concern number one, many people talk about it. Personally, I don't think it's such a big concern, but I'll address it anyhow. Everybody says, they used to say, how come we don't generate Nokias here? I always, you know, said, you know, it's good that we are not generating Nokias here. See what happens to Nokia now. However, in a more general way, how come we are not generating large companies? And it's true that large leading companies will not generate in the last 10 years. Before that, yes, we have Checkpoint, Amdox, Teva, and a few others that are leading their sector from Israel. However, in the last 10 years, there was, there was not such companies. I think, well, the answer to that is very simple. The market for acquisition is really a market for management talent. The better managed companies will buy the less managed companies and utilize its resources, technology much better than the startup. And as a result, the right thing for most startups is to be sold because they don't have the management depth and maybe not the will to become a leader in the field. However, now, as compared to 20 years ago, 
there are still a little bit of entrepreneurs that they already have money, they don't, they don't need to sell the company for the money, they have experience, they have executives who work for the largest company in the world. So the whole management talent base is right to make big companies, and they see also in the wheel of many startup companies to become leaders. Uh, this example is Yalwan Waldman from Melanos, who is a second time entrepreneur, and the Melanos see he is going all the way for the gold, but I see many such startups in the pipeline, and we can talk about it later in the panel. Concern number two, which is a real concern, the amount of money that was raised for new funds in 2010 for Israeli DC funds is zero. This is very concerning, so the DC industry finances a big part of the startup industry. On the flip side, however, you have all the leading funds from America, without exception, investing today in Israel, some with local offices like Sequoia, some without local offices like Excel and Client Authorities. And also, there's a big supply of funds available from non uh, sources. So the research that we did shows that about half of the startups in Israel are uh, fine with non VC sources, angels, companies, etc. Et 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 and this is normal, uh, maybe the statistics of the United States are the same. Uh, it has advantages and disadvantages, but I don't think there is a serious problem to fund good startups in Israel. Uh, third concern is that uh, many of the traditional areas where Israel excelled in the past. Specifically, semiconductors and telecommunications are not in favor with VC because you invest, you have to invest too much money before you can see an exit. This is true. The flip side of that is that the world has changed. So today, you know, to, to start a company and making applications for Facebook or for iPhones or whatever, it's much more capital efficient. It's very little money. You can make a startup. A startup is very successful very quickly. Uh, the first concern, but the first we're talking the panel, the last concern is very important, is that the growth statistics of our education system is going down by standard measures, tests, etc. I agree that this is a situation, and we can talk about the solution maybe in the panel. However, I don't think it's such a threat to the start of this thing. Because the startup, well, let's, let's, let's talk about the best entrepreneurs in the world. Who are they? Larry Ellison, College Dropout. Bill Gates, College Dropout. And number one, Steve Jobs, College Dropout. So, what drives the startup industry are the entrepreneurs at the, at the top. The, the ability to be an entrepreneur and the leader and successful entrepreneur is not dependent on the educational system. This is my view. Obviously, you need the engineers and all the army to make the vision work. So it's an important problem. But I'm not as concerned about it as uh, some others. Um, however, it is what it is. I just want to summarize uh, with something that People could say, you know, you know are we referring to China and India, etc. Of course, you know, they're producing, producing millions of engineers. We are, we are producing 8,000 or 10,000 engineers a year. But obviously, that's not why we are better in the startup nation, in the start startup industry. Start the reason we are better in the startup industry is actually connected to this weekly portion, which is with the portion of Korach. So Moses is a great, great leader of Jewish people. One day, Korach, we're going to be a little bit more Moses, and 250 Jewish leaders rise up and say, you know, we are all holy, why do you, we can say, why do you patronize on us? Of course, what it is very right bad in that context, but I think this is the reason why you see such a viable start of this year. Everybody wants to be a chief. Everybody wants to start a company. The only problem is not to be an obedience. So, that's a beautiful panel.